The very first thing that the audience are greeted with is a black screen. Before the movie has even started, the audience can associate this colour with its connotations of mystery and fear. The titles that appear are red. The mise-en-scene is all about colour connotations, and red is often used to symbolise blood or death within film. This depicts a genre of horror almost immediately for the audience. Another thing that shows this is the editing of this sequence. The titles fade in and out of the screen and VFX has been used to subtly add smoke behind them as they appear. All of this adds to creating an atmosphere. There are basic horror conventions that create suspense and interest for the audience. It could connote something disappearing within the narrative. The font type is also important. They use a sans serif font that is quite simplistic. This suggests that the film is going to have a modern setting and be relatable for the audience. In the next shot, the editing is clever. They turn the production company's logo into the light shade of the room, which is the first setting. This is done by turning the internal font clockwise and the external font anti-clockwise. This creates a distorted feeling. There is a pan down to reveal a wide angle shot of a young boy in bed. This is a massive horror convention because often horror films will use young children to make the audience emotionally connect with and feel more scared for the characters. Mise on scene wise, the room is dark, seemingly only moonlit. Another convention of horror, because it is suggesting the unknown. Rule of thirds is also broken. The boy is placed in the central third, and this for one tells the audience that his character is of importance, but also creates a distorted, uncomfortable feeling too. This is a very long shot, as the camera tracks to the right, we are introduced to the outside of his room. It is still very dark, and so only a few features are recognisable. Long shots help to create tension and an uncomfortable atmosphere for an audience, making them want to look to see an outcome. There is non-digestic music and hyperreal sound playing over the top of the sequence. In horror films, this is what creates a scare factor. These sounds make the actions appear more daunting and realistic, meaning that an audience can relate to the situation a bit more. The sounds used in this sequence are quite high pitched and create a cold, eerie feeling. They are however of a high fidelity, as this is what you expect to hear in a stereotypical horror film. The way that the camera tracks through the house makes the audience feel as if they are seeing the house through the eyes of someone else. This makes them question aspects of the narrative, and if they are viewing the film in the first person, or in the third person. A silhouette of a figure appears in the window of what seems to be a kitchen. This is shown in the left third of the wide shot. The room is large and is only lit by one light. This is a convention in most horror films because it gives the impression of an isolated location or haunted house. This gives narrative foreshadowing to the audience. They have used an enigma code to suggest a character but have not revealed a face or personality. The camera continues to track around the house to then reveal a face. The use of facial expressions and props create a personality for this character. She looks depressed and her eyes are looking down. There are creases in her face too. All of these expressions suggest fear and pain to the audience. The film are using both old and young characters. The last part of the titles is a fade to black. Insidious appears in big red lettering and the music becomes louder and more high pitched. It creates a buzz around the title of the film.